Let's start off this show with the big story that dropped yesterday. Now, as you can see from the title, we will be getting into some other stuff like quarterback trade targets. Also, we'll probably mention for a little bit, very briefly, some of the reserve and future contracts that the Steelers, I think it was yesterday that the Steelers brought on. No, it was yesterday. It was two days ago, something like that. And then Tomlin just did his press conference and answered a lot of questions. I'll go over that real quick. But first, we got to start off with the Deontay Johnson quote where he defended Mason Rudolph and essentially said he wants number two to be QB1 for 2024. So here it is. He says, I've been on the Mason plane. So it wasn't nothing I wasn't expecting for him not to do. I kind of had high hopes of him doing what he's been doing. When he became the starter, I hope he gets the job next year and do what he's got to do because he did a great job, in my opinion. So this quote doesn't shock me too much, and it's for multiple reasons. One is because Deontay is just an honest guy when it comes to his media answers. That's what I've come to discover over the last couple of years. Deontay, very quiet when he first came into the league. And he's still a quiet dude, but whenever he talks to the media or he's giving answers, I think he's just an honest guy. He's just going to tell it like it is. He's not trying to spew any negativity. He's not trying to be spiteful or take shots at people, but he's just going to give his honest opinion. Like you remember last year, whenever we were going into the Carolina Panthers game and there was a legitimate conversation whether or not Mason or Mitch was going to be the starter. At that point, Mitch had the edge. He was listed as the backup. He came in in the Ravens game uh, through the three picks. That's why we're having this conversation between Mitch and Mason. But on the depth chart, it was solidly Mitch as the backup. If Kenny goes down, he's supposed to come in. But due to Mitch's picks, there was a conversation. And when Deontay was asked about it, like, hey, who do you want to be the quarterback for this Panthers game? He's like, you know what? I, I support Mason. You know, he's been around a minute. He was here whenever I came into the league. I think he throws a good ball. Like, he wasn't taking a shot at Mitch. He was just being honest that, you know, he likes Mason. Same thing in his interview with me and Moats earlier this year when we asked him about, about Matt Canada. He didn't say anything bad about him, but there were some things you could read be in between the lines. He was like, yeah, Canada, you know, he's there. He's the boss. We, we got to do what he says. You know, you don't have to like him, but you got to respect him. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what's going on there? He also brought up a couple weeks after that, when he was asked about the Arizona Cardinals letdown game, hey, did the Steelers overlook Arizona because they only had two wins? And he's like, yeah, you know what? Honestly, maybe we did. And in this case, I think it's just the same thing. I do think he likes Mason. I think there's a certain affinity there because whenever he was a rookie, Mason Rudolph was his quarterback in 2019. So he's seen the whole Mason Rudolph arc where he became the starter because of Ben's injury. But then Ben came back, so obviously Mason goes back to the bench for a couple of years. And then whenever Mason was supposed to potentially get a chance, we signed Mitch Trubisky in free agency and then draft Kenny Pickett in the first round. And then Mason is delegated fairly quickly in the offseason to QB3. And that's where he's been ever since. And then just this offseason, Steelers weren't that eager to resign Mason. They let him test the market. No one really around the league wanted him that bad. But then he ended up coming back here and right back to QB3. So he's seen that whole arc. But he's also seen Mason steady grinding, steady working, keeping the head down, staying humble. And then when he did get his opportunity, he played good. That was the best quarterback play we've seen in the last two years. I've said it how many times? I sound like a broken record. But he's also, to, to play off that, I mean, this is why the comment is not surprising to me. Like, he... Deontay saw the same thing I just said right there. He saw the same thing we all saw from our TVs. Mason was the best quarterback for this offense in 2023. So why wouldn't Deontay want Mason next year? Deontay averaged 57 yards and had two touchdowns in Mason's four games. You saw Pickens' stat line have a major uptick. The offense as a whole had a major uptick. I saw some stat that over Mason's games being a starter, we averaged 24 points per game. That would have had us... Eighth in the league. 24 points per game. Not bad. And probably could have even been better had it not been the 
pick in the red zone in the playoff game, you know, some of the mishaps that we had. But the offense looked competent. In fact, it looked better than confident. It looked legit. It looked like we could compete with other good offenses around the league. Now, what do I make of this comment, though? I still stand firm on my opinion we got to bring Mason Rudolph back because these four games have intrigued me. Like, if he can keep this up, you have QB1. Now, we'll get to the Mike Tomlin press conference in a little bit. He did declare Kenny Pickett will be QB1 heading into 2024. But just going back to my last stream where I was talking about who should it be, Kenny Pickett or Mason next year, who should have the edge, I feel like no matter what, it's a competition. But I'm leaning Mason to have the QB1 spot on the depth chart, to have the edge going into it because of what he did. I mean, his playmaking was there. He showcased his arm talent. He was in command. He was in control. Basically showed me that he has what it takes. The old Mason Rudolph that we knew from 2019 seems to be in the past. This new guy is a guy that I'm intrigued about, is a guy that I think we can build around and be. I mean, I, I hope I'm I hope I'm not sounding like I'm going too far with this, but he, he could be a top 10 quarterback if he just continues what he did for those four games. Like that's top 10 quarterback stuff. You guys see the stats too. You guys see the rankings for these last four games over the last month. Mason Rudolph is up there with anyone. Any quarterback over these last four weeks, Mason Rudolph compared just as good to any of them. So I assumed if we do bring Mason back, no matter what, there would be a competition between him and Kenny. But now after this comment by Deontay, I'm wondering if the two can coexist in this Steelers locker room. Because I'm wondering, I'm curious if Deontay's sentiments here ring true throughout everyone on the offense. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if those sentiments were true amongst everyone in the locker room. Because, again, we all saw what we saw out there with this offense. It got better with Mason Rudolph. The offense had new life. The guys believed. Pickens, even when he didn't get any production in that Baltimore Ravens game, did not say a peep. Meanwhile, we saw him throughout the season whenever he wasn't getting targeted. The offense was stymied. He'd go to Instagram. He'd say stuff in the post game. We see his body language out on the sidelines, pouting, moping, being immature. Baltimore game with Mace at the helm? You, you would not have known that he didn't get a catch. You would have thought, ah, yeah, he had a normal Pickens game out there. But with Mason, we saw that we could win in a shootout if needed. Against the Seahawks, because that was back and forth. Gene on the Seahawks, they were putting up points, but then we respond. Could have had 38 points if we needed to. Ended up with 31, I believe. Ended up with 31, but Najee slid right before the end zone at the end of the game to run out the clock. If we need to blow out a team early on and have the game in wraps by the third quarter, we, we could do that too. We were capable of that. We saw that in the Bengals game. If it needed to be more of a slugfest, more of a conservative game, in bad conditions, we could win with that style too in the Ravens game. And even in the playoffs, I know we didn't win, but you saw if we got down with Mason at the helm, we could come back and make it a legitimate game, which we did. And it wasn't in spite of Mason that we got back. It was because of him. He was making plays, third and longs, evading the pocket, throwing it downfield, a couple touchdowns in the second half. Like, Mason did his thing in that Bills game to get us back into it. So that's why this comment's really interesting. Like the comment in a way backs what I think I'm seeing out there and what probably a lot of you guys are seeing or, or even feeling. I think Mason became the leader of this offense. Like, and he didn't do it by saying, I'm the leader. He didn't do it by being the first round pick. He did it by going back to the beginning, keeping his head down, staying humble. And when the time came, he let the work speak for itself. Let the offensive production and his production speak for itself. Just because you have a title, just because Mason Rudolph wasn't listed as QB1 on the depth chart, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you're a leader or not a leader. Just because Mason was QB3, that doesn't mean he can't be the leader of this team. 
I think you just got to ask the players. But I think we know. I, I think we got a feel for who they're inspired by, who they're looking to, at least at this point. Now, I think Kenny's going to be back. I think Mason's going to be back because that's what Tomlin said as much in his press conference. He said, Kenny, he plans on being having back his QB1. Tomlin also admits it's going to be a big year for him. Like, it's almost do or die. Like, this, your, your career is on the line for this. Not necessarily career in the NFL because, you you know, you could make your rounds, be a backup. You, you could get a job in many different ways in the NFL. But in terms of being a Steelers franchise, like, this is it. I, this is do or die. Make or break. Tomlin said he even had that conversation with Kenny. Also said that he does want Mason back. Now, Mason is an unrestricted free agent, so the Steelers – could potentially not get what they want there because Mason could look for other teams, but he does want Mason back. That is the plan. And he wants Kenny and Mason to duke it out for the starting spot. Also brought up that the offensive coordinator, like I thought he did really good in his press conference. If you guys saw it, I thought he answered everything on point. Pretty much exactly what we want to hear. He said the OC will be brought in from the outside. And the OC will have NFL experience and will be good with quarterbacks. That's exactly what we're looking for. Exactly. The other thing I have highlighted here is Broderick Jones may or may not be playing left tackle. Tomlin is okay with his versatility and okay with potentially having him on the left side or the right side in 2024. But yeah, the uh, Deontay Johnson comments, uh, very interesting. Very, very interesting. I don't think it's an uh, end-all, be-all. Because Deontay Johnson doesn't necessarily get to dictate who our quarterback is. But I think it also says something. Like, if you ask Pickens the same thing, do you agree with Deontay? If you ask Najee the same thing, or the offensive lineman the same thing, I'd be apt to believe that they would agree with them. Maybe they they probably would give a more PC answer because, like I mentioned, I think Deontay is just an honest dude to a fault whenever he's addressing the media. But we saw it, right? We saw it with that offense. It was different. People believed in each other. Mason was cooking. Everyone was cooking. 30 points in back-to-back -back weeks. Beat the Ravens in the monsoon on the road. Came back in a playoff environment against the Bills to get it within one score. I mean, looked just as good as an offense as the Bills did in the second half of that game. We just did our boneheaded mistakes in the first half. That's what screwed us. I wholeheartedly think we could have advanced if we would have played our game and we could beat any of these AFC teams. That was with Mason Rudolph at the helm. Now. Could that have also been the case with Kenny Pickett? I don't know. I would like to believe so. I've mentioned how many times. If Kenny didn't get hurt, I think we would have been a lock for the playoffs. We wouldn't have had to rely on the Jaguars losing or wait till week 18. I, I thought we would have had our seating locked up probably by like week 16, 17. But he was unavailable. He left the door open. And Mason performed. Better than Kenny Pickett has this year. Better than Kenny Pickett has throughout Kenny Pickett's career. So that's why we stuck with Mason. And it felt like the offense had new life all around. Something that we haven't seen since Big Ben. And I don't think that's something to just overlook and be like, yeah, I think we're just going to give Kenny the job next year and Mason will let him walk off into the sunset and go to another team. No, I feel like the Steelers got to prioritize Mason. How much money is he going to want? I, that's a whole different story, but I think that's what we got to be looking at this offseason. Bring back Mason Rudolph. I would give him the edge of being quarterback one heading into the offseason. But Tomlin said it's going to be Kenny. It is what it is. Either way, there's got to be competition. Either way. What's popping, everyone? How we doing? Ethan Leach asking me, how you doing today, Deke? I am doing really good. Hope you guys are doing good too. 
Ethan Leach says, I like what Mason did, but like Jake Browning, he didn't have recent tape on him. Struggled at times against Buffalo. We need legitimate competition like a Justin Fields. We might talk some Justin Fields later in the stream. Donald Hood, bro, what are we doing? I was a Kenny guy for a while, but after seeing Mason, how much better it could be, it completely turned me off from Kenny. I'm not writing off Kenny. I'm just acknowledging what I saw. The offense was the best with Mason, Mason Rudolph, and it didn't go down the tubes. It didn't fold. You know what I mean? Like Everyone was waiting for Mason to choke in the playoffs potentially, right? When's he going to turn into a pumpkin? Everyone's bringing that analogy up. This year with quarterbacks, backup quarterbacks to get in. When's the hot streak going to end? It didn't with Mason. It was looking a little bleak in the first quarter-ish, first, second quarter-ish of that playoff game. I will admit, it was looking a little bleak, but that wasn't all on Mason. Almost like, you know, how I brought up some excuses or a context for Kenny's games throughout the season. How I would say, listen, a lot of this is not all on Kenny. Everyone wants to blame everything on Kenny. We got Matt Canada back there. We got an O-line that's not blocking. We got receivers running wrong routes or dropping. Like, there was a lot of things at play with some of Kenny's poor performances throughout this season, some of his ups and downs. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it for this playoff game with Mason. Pickens fumbling. Uh, that's not on Mason. Muth fumbling. Almost fumbling, at least. Luckily, we did get the ball back. That's not on Mason. The O-line having one of their worst games in a minute. Not on Mason. Now we adjusted. We did some different things. End of that first quarter, or end of that first half, going into the second half. The pick on Mason, sure, bad decision. But like, let's acknowledge some of the stuff that he was doing to get us back in the game and only down score where we legitimately had a chance. I thought he was solid all four games. Like I didn't think he wavered. In my opinion, I, he showed me. Going back to what I said at the beginning, he showed me. He got what it takes. He's got me intrigued at least. He's got me intrigued at least that I want to see a full sample size. If I get what he just did in those four games without much preparation for a full season, that could be interesting. That's I'm trying not to go too far-fetched. Because you could say I did it heading into this year with uh, Kenny, saying he's going to be top three, right? I think it'd be top ten. Like If Mason did that consistently, that'd be that'd be top ten quarterback play. Top 10. All right, we got some Herbert comments in the chat, too. Mayfield. Yeah, yeah, I got all those guys. We'll talk about them. I'll give you my my thumbs up, thumbs down, whether or not we should bring those dudes in here. What's the upside? What's the downside? But before I get into that, real briefly, I, I kind of talked about the Tomlin press conference. I, I weaved it into the intro there because we, we don't re we don't really got to go over it that much. Let's talk about some of these reserve contract signings real quick. There's a couple names here. We had 17 dudes we signed to reserve slash future contracts. Cornerback Luke Barku. We're familiar with him. We brought him in from the XFL last offseason. I think he just was stuck on the practice squad all year. Saw him in training camp. Saw him in preseason a little bit. Offensive tackle Tyler Beach. Wide receiver Marquez Callaway. That's a name. I'll get back to him. Fullback Jack Coletto. Offensive tackle Kellen Deesh. Safety Jalen Elliott. Offensive lineman Joey Fisher. Wide receiver Des Fitzpatrick. Offensive tackle, Devery Hamilton. Offensive tackle, Anderson Hardy. Wide receiver, Kalon Harris. Defensive lineman, Jonathan Marshall. I'm still holding out hope for that guy. He was a sleeper over with the Jets. Center, Ryan McCollum. Wide receiver, Denzel Mims. Running back, Aaron Shampkin. Champ Glenn. Defensive lineman, Jacob Slade. And wide receiver, Deuce Watts. So the two names that stick out to me here are Denzel Mims and Marquez Callaway. I mentioned Luke Barku a little bit. The only reason we're familiar with the name is because he's been here a little bit. I think he wasn't he like the XFL's defensive player of the year. No, he wasn't the defensive player of the year, but he had like a, he had a couple picks or something. He was considered one of their best cornerbacks. But back to the receivers. It's Denzel Mims, Marquez Callaway. These are the bigger names. Denzel Mims, because he was a former second round pick. This was going back to the Claypool draft. Jets had him. 
for his rookie season and first couple years, nothing ever really happened. I uh, think there was a coaching change, management change after his rookie year. Just never really caught on. Zach Wilson's poor play, and he got bounced around a little bit. Lions picked him up for their practice squad, but then they cut him or he got hurt. And we picked him up this season, middle of this season. He's just been chilling on practice squad this whole time. I'm happy we're going to give him a look for this offseason because he's got talent. It's not going to hurt. Like, we got our first – at this point, we only have two receivers set. It's Deontay and Pickens. Because I was going to say, we got our first three receivers set. But, like, Calvin Austin, Allen Robinson, I don't know what their deal is. I know we're going to have Calvin Austin back for sure because of special teams. But as, like, our steady slot receiver, steady third receiver, I think that's up for grabs. So who knows if Denzel Mims could make the most of it. And same with Marquez Callaway. He had almost 700 yards a couple years ago for the Saints. This year was a down year. So he's still young. He proved that he could actually do something in this league by posting almost 700 yards in a season. So just have him chilling on the practice squad or for this reserve future contract and give him a chance in the offseason, that doesn't hurt at all. But all the other names, a couple of them you probably recognize because they've been a part of the organization, part of the practice squad for either the last year or two. But yeah, Mims, Callaway, the big names, and then Luke Barku, we know him because he was a name in the XFL, and he was able to stick around for this year. But now, let me see if you guys have any responses to that, and then we'll get into this uh, quarterback trade talk. T. Lottie says, sign Mariota. No, get out of here with this. No, we're not, we're not bringing in Marcus Mariota. No, no. J2 Smooth, bro, what about Corey Trice? I'm excited about Corey Trice. Yeah, he'll be competing for a spot. Absolutely. Was bummed that he got injured. Because I thought he he probably, with how our cornerback situation played out this year, he probably would have been playing midseason, like legitimate snaps. Probably. It would have been him and JPJ. But now, because he was unavailable all year, we didn't get any tape, tape on him. He'll probably have to compete with a free agent we bring in or someone that we draft. But we know he's athletic. We know he's got that big frame like JPJ. An avatar, as Tomlin would say it. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about Trice, though. Definitely excited. All right, let's get into the quarterback trade targets. Now, I cheated on this a little bit because two of these names are going to be free agents. And the first one I'm going to bring up here... Yeah, the first two, I'm just going to bring up the free agents. We'll go over these guys probably more quickly than the other three. So I got five total. These are trade targets that have been brought up in connection with the Steelers. And, you know, if Steelers could use an upgrade at the quarterback position. These are the guys that they should look at by multiple analysts, you know, multiple guys around the NFL. These are kind of the probably the top five names, top five names that are being brought up. For trade or through free agency. The first two guys are free agency. Baker Mayfield. So, Baker. Who would have thought we'd, we'd be at this point? I mean, he was brought up in the past in connection with the Steelers after Ben retired. Remember that? With the whole Deshaun Watson debacle and the Browns tried to get Watson. Baker heard about it. He's like, I'm not coming back to the Browns. And then the Browns had to get rid of Baker. Then they gave the house to get to Sean Watson. Steelers were there, were, there was a little connection. There were reports and rumors that Baker was interested in coming here and that a trade could be facilitated. But ultimately, never happened. And uh, now, yeah, a year or two later, we circle back to Baker being an option or being talked about in connection with Pittsburgh. Uh it's not happening. I'm just going to be straight up with you. It's it's not happening because Baker's playing really good this year with Tampa Bay. So I think Tampa Bay, worst case, they're going to franchise him, but they're probably going to give him some sort of extension like Geno Smith got with Seattle. You look at their stats and their you know redemption years. Baker's was this year. Geno's was last year. Stats are very similar. And in this case with Baker, he actually advanced in the playoffs, which is something that Geno didn't do. So I'd expect him to get around $25 million, at least. $25 million a year, at least. 
because I think that's what Gino got. He's he's in the range of like twenty five to thirty million, depending on how you look at the numbers. I think he gets at least that. And if Baker was on the open market, he he probably would get that. Now, I don't know if the Bucks are going to have to pay a little bit of a premium, or if the Bucks will get a hometown discount because they were the team that took a chance on him to actually start this year, or at least give him the competition to be a quarterback one against Kyle Trask. So I don't know, but that's the range. That's like his market value right now. If Geno Smith got that deal with the Seahawks, Baker Mayfield at this point in his career versus Geno Smith last year, Baker Mayfield is younger. And again, he actually led the Buccaneers past the game in the playoffs where Geno Smith was one and done. I don't think we can afford that at this point for Baker Mayfield, because there's another name that's going to be brought up later. There's certain names you can break the bank for, right? You can make some stipulations. We're talking about top five, six elite guys. But for a Baker Mayfield, who is probably going to just always be in that top, his ceiling's like top 10. Ceiling's top 10, right? Top 10, 11, 12. He's always going to be in that range to floor. No, floor is actually, his floor is pretty bad. We've seen that before. Like, we're talking, like, 25th or something. But, like, no, I, I see his range. If he keeps playing like this, his range is going to be, like, 10, 11 to 20, maybe, maybe 17, 18. You know what I mean? Like, that's what he's going to be. $25 million for that right now with how our Steelers franchise is set up, personnel-wise, I, I think it's too much. I think it's too much. And that gets me to the next guy, Kirk Cousins. I feel the same way. I feel the same way about this guy. In different ways, though, in a different light. At least Baker, he's at the portion of his career, still younger. I think his narrative is still being written. He's in the playoffs this year. Who knows if he wins this game, goes on a little bit of a playoff run. Kirk Cousins in the playoffs, can't make it past the wild card. And he's older than Baker. Like we, We've seen this story before how many times where it's a big game, Kirk Cousins lets you down. Now, he'll keep your team relevant. He's like a good quarterback. He'll keep your team relevant. He'll put up the fantasy stats. But when push comes to shove, Kirk Cousins isn't a guy that, that I really believe in to take the next step to get your team to the next level. So why do I want to pay? 20, it'll be more than $25 million. It'll be, be even more than Baker. It will be. Because Kirk Cousins' career has been better than Baker Mayfield's career. I will admit that. As a whole, Baker's a lot more ups and downs. So there's more consistency, more security with Kirk Cousins. But I, I got I got the same feeling, if not a worse feeling, when push comes to seven in the playoffs with Kirk versus a Baker. So why am I paying more for Kirk? I don't see it. Doesn't make sense. And if you're gonna compare these two quarterbacks to Mason Rudolph and what Mason Rudolph's ceiling could be, I'm talking about Mason Rudolph's ceiling. Being like top 10. We saw really good play from him in those four games. We could get him back maybe for 8 million, 10 million. And he's familiar with the franchise. Obviously, the players have an affinity towards him. Obviously, the players view him as a leader, view him as a guy that they like to have around. So, like, there's a lot of pauses with Mason. I know there's more uncertainty, but for a guy that you think has a similar ceiling, maybe, maybe even a better ceiling. Then Kirk Cousins or Baker Mayfield, I'd, I'd rather pay less for that than more for guys like Cousins and Mayfield. That's my take. Now let's get to the guys that are being brought up as trade candidates. Mayfield, Cousins, free agents. Justin Fields, this, this is the name being brought up a lot. Um, High upside guy, to me, hasn't really – proven much in the league outside of putting up fantasy stats, putting up big numbers, showing flash, showing off highlights, highlight real plays. But in terms of winning games, his record ain't that promising. I know he had a good finish to this season, but three years in, we're still talking about bringing in a new offensive coordinator for fields. He needs more help, this and that. Shouldn't we have a better feeling on the dude at this point? So what's his market going to be? And and this, uh, this is all dependent on whether or not the Bears are going to move off him. I think they would be foolish not to. I, I think the Bears got to go with Caleb Williams 
move off of Justin Fields. But if they want to stick with Fields, obviously this trade won't be in play. But let's say they draft Williams. They're willing to move off Fields. Should the Steelers do this? Uh, no. If the plan is to bring in Mason Rudolph, if the plan is to bring back Kenny Pickett, I think the quarterback room will be a little bit too busy. Now, the competition isn't a bad thing, but what you're going to have to give up for Fields, I'd just rather roll with Mason and off to give, an, give up an asset to have another quarterback in the room, right? For Fields, I think his market's going to be second or third round. Some people talk about first rounders or top 10 picks. I think it's more second, but I even think that's too much at this point. If we're going to have Kenny, if we're going to have Mason Rudolph here, two dudes that have better records as starting quarterbacks in the league than Justin Fields, I just roll the dice on them and not give up a draft pick. That's the thing. Now, I know Fields' contract isn't anything crazy, so you could afford it for a year, but you also got to worry about paying him because his contract is going to be up. So it's either Fields works out, okay, you got to pay him the contract and whatever, or he doesn't work out and you just gave up a second-round pick for nothing. I'd just rather roll with Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett, two guys that I, I feel like at this point are better NFL quarterbacks than Justin Fields. I know Fields has more upside. If he gets in the right system, there is higher potential, but I don't want to give up a second-round pick for that. When I know we can win football games with Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph. And Mason Rudolph, like like I said, I think Mason, Mason's got some upside right now. Showed off that arm talent, showed off some of the playmaking. All right, last two names, Russell Wilson. Uh, no, just no. No. Uh, he might get cut, so there's that. Uh, if you are trading for him, like Fields, I don't want to give up any assets. I don't want to give up any draft picks for Russ at this point in Russ's career. Plus, the contract that he has is – astronomical and is not worth the play that he's giving you but if he's cut and he's getting a blank slate and you know can have negotiations with teams i still think he's going to cost too much i think he's going to be 20 mil 20 mil and at this point i i'll take my chances with mason or kenny pickett that's the theme with these first four guys that i brought up Baker, Kirk Cousins, Fields, Russell Wilson. For the price of these guys and what it's going to take to get them, I'll roll the dice with Mason and Kenny and see what we got with those two in a competition. Whoever wins in the competition this offseason, I'm going to feel good about going into 2024 because Mason proved that he can elevate his play. So it's like, all right, Kenny, if you beat him out, there might be something there. There might be something there, especially with how – 2023 ended with all the adversity you quote unquote got benched i guess at the end of the season like are right, you able to overcome all that show that mental toughness beat out a mason rudolph i'm feeling good about you being our quarterback 2024 because we know the floor is all right we could go seven and four first 11 games and that's with you playing bad just imagine if you could get back to the kenny pickett that i knew from you being at college at Pitt, like that guy his senior year that guy expected him to grow into his second year in the pros, but didn't. That guy that we saw at the end of his rookie year, right? Being one of the top-rated quarterbacks for the last, like, eight, nine weeks of the season. If you get back to that, beat out Mason, then, yeah, I'm feeling good about Kenny Pickett for 2024. Last name, Herbert. Uh, would anyone be against this? <laughs> would anyone be against this? If it happened, he's got a big contract, 50 million. But if the Steelers did this, I, I think we would all be like, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out the rest of the contracts on defense and the rest of our offensive players to work around it. Omar Khan's a numbers guy. He's a number numbers wizard. He'll figure out the rest. He'll do restructures and cuts and all types of stuff. And I just don't think the Chargers are trading Justin Herbert. They would be idiotic to do that because they have a coaching vacancy and the coach that they're going to be signing on is going to be expecting Justin Herbert to be their quarterback. Uh, I don't think anyone's signing on to be the LA Chargers head coach if Justin Herbert 
isn't there. So, yeah, I think uh, Justin Herbert's not going to be getting traded. I feel like it would take too much to get him. I think it would take four or five first-round picks, some players. It'd be too much. And then you got to deal with the contract. For a guy, too, I think he's one of the elite talents. I think he's in the top ten, you know, top seven, eight guys in the league for sure. We we know that. But $50 million for a guy that hasn't won a playoff game yet, um yeah that might be a little bit too much i think if there was one of these moves that were made though this would be the one i would be most okay with because uh when you got a franchise guy when you got a guy that is top seven eight definitively you're not as butthurt over paying them a certain amount like i'd rather pay justin herbert the 50 million versus kirk or baker or fields or russ you know 25 30 million you get what i'm saying you got herbert for a decade you got a dude that's gonna elevate guys around you now we still have yet to see it in the playoffs that's why i don't think this this move just flat out right isn't happening i don't think the Steelers are thinking about it which is why i am completely fine with rolling with kenny pickett i'm completely fine with rolling with mason rudolph and having a competition between the two i think that is the smartest move out of all those that I just listed. I'm rolling with Mason. I'm rolling with Kenny. One of the two, whoever wins it out. And going back to what I said at the beginning, I like I'm leaning Mason, man. I'm leaning Mason. I don't think Tomlin's going to go about it that way based off how he answered questions in his press conference. But that's where I'm at. I think the players do believe in Mason, man. I think there was a different vibe with this team the last four weeks of the season. There was a certain belief. There was certain camaraderie that just flat out wasn't there when Kenny was the starter. Now, could that change? Yeah, things can be very fluid. Things can be very fluid. If Kenny starts playing like Mason and more and better than Mason, then, yeah, they'll be supporting Kenny Pickett. <laughs> it's kind of as simple as that. It's not rocket science. Um... Mark Pennington ST says, let's bring in Kirk Cousins. No, I'm good on Kirk. Sorry. Hold on. I'm trying to refresh this chat real quick. Um, Yade World. So I feel like Baker would sabotage us. No, he wants to sabotage the Browns. No, no, no. He wants revenge on the Browns. Uh, Philip Pascal says, we need the commenters OC. I, I believe you mean the commanders, Eric B. Enemy. Yeah, he's going to be in the discussions for sure. I, I'm sure he will be. Based off Tomlin's criteria and what they're looking for in an OC, he fits the bill. He'll be in the conversations. <laughs> Happy holidays, PGH is trying to trade me to the Bears. I think he's trying to trade me in a package deal for like Justin Fields or something. We'd be getting house then. You, no, 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 no. We'd be getting ripped off. If you trade me to the Bears for Justin Fields and whatever else the Steelers are giving out, we'd, we'd be getting house on that. You, you can't do that. That's that's a foolish move. No. Uh, Hunter Ransom asked, draft a QB. Yeah, I think that's an option. I think that's an option. So, yeah, my end of the day... I guess, uh, solution or thoughts on what the Steelers should do at quarterback going in this offseason is roll with Kenyon Mason, cut Mitch, and then draft the quarterback third rounder later. I don't want to spend a third rounder on a quarterback. So I, I guess fourth rounder later is what I'm trying to say. I think those first three rounds, we can actually get guys that are going to make an impact next year and are going to play. So get like a quarterback in the fourth round. Like a Jordan Travis, if Jordan Travis slips that far because of his injury and stuff, get get someone like him. I think that'd be a good way to go about it. But all right, I'm out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will see you in, since it's the off season, I'll see you guys, I think, in a couple weeks. 30th or the 31st, we'll go over more off season stuff. We might have an offensive coordinator at that point. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed today's edition of Steelers Talk on Bleach Report with Deke. Peace out. Have a great rest of the day.